Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw. Oh boy. Oh, where the fuck do I begin? Oh, ooh, let, let me be careful though. Or else I'm going to sound like, uh, what was it people saying on the internet right now? An entitled infant, as Xavier Woods puts it right now. If we complain about the show or really say anything bad about it or criticize them. Him saying WWE and NXT are the same thing that... You know, I'm not going to get into all of Woods' comments of what he said, but just going back to that entitled infant thing, that almost like we're not allowed to have an opinion or criticize the show in any way. Because, you know, I said this last week, if you defended Monday Night Raw last week in any type of form or capacity, you are a fucking moron and really need to rethink your life on how you watch wrestling. Um... B, yeah, I don't really agree with his comments, though, or what he said about fans being entitled for talking about the show. Listen, <laughs> Raw deserves every criticism they get, okay? Well, they be in general, but um, they deserve a lot of fucking criticism. And what do I have to say? Was this show even better tonight, or was it as worse as last week? Because it, it, this show is still pretty bad, okay? It's... Like I say, it's almost really hard to find anything good out of it because it's just bullshit you see on this show. And I'm thinking to myself, was it really gonna be different? Um, really? Like that's that's what I I kind of thought too. But or in Houston, Texas this week. Uh, but it did start off with a Tim Bell salute uh, to former President George H. Uh, w. Bush. I believe his body they brought to Houston today, if I'm correct. But they did a Tim Bell salute for him. Uh, we didn't kick it off, which was supposed to be a tag match between Ronda Rousey and Natalya versus Nia Jax and Tamina. Next thing you know, the riots come, Riot Squad come out with a table. Tamina and Nia Jax immediately attack Rousey and Natalya. They beat the crap out of both of them as the Riot Squad start beating up Natalya then. Ronda tried to save her, but Natalya got put through a table as Ronda got destroyed by both um, Nia Jax and Tamina uh, in the ring then. <clears throat> in the ring then. So, Ronda was trying to check on Natalya after that. But, okay, one thing I will say that it was somewhat different than last week. No, this wasn't another Corbin comes out and starts doing some 20 minute, 30 long promo bullshit again. And was supposedly into a match, but this pretty much would set up something later in the night. Um, one thing I will say, I'm surprised nobody didn't really come out and help um, during that, because we're the faces. B, uh, what is this? I, you know, I swear Natalia gets beat up by the Riot Squad so many times, I don't even know what to say about that. She just gets her ass kicked by almost anybody from several people on just damn every other week or every week really it's like she tries to make a save of being a match she gets beat up and pretty much ronda i guess helped natalia in the back as the doctors checked on her but that was different but this is where, uh, where we get in the worst bullshit tonight this is where i say this is hard to find anything good from this show what do you want to do let's rehash things so next week that didn't work and let's make it worse this time let's have the same forum thing as alexa bliss you know Saying she was going to do this forum and for the women's division. So let's bring Sasha and Bailey out here to answer fan questions or independent wrestlers that are in the crowd posing as fans or planted fans. And you, you know these were planted fan questions out there. They put Charlie Caruso out there and Sasha and Bailey. Cal okay, where, where's Mickey James, Danny Brooke, and Alicia Fox? Uh, we're, we're waiting on them. Which um, Bliss said, I reprimanded them so they won't be here. And these, I'll just say, independent wrestlers start asking questions, talking about Sasha using Bailey, and even though they laughed at it and stuff, and if there was any wrestlers they wanted to face from any era, which would it be? Which would anybody knew this answer? They wanted both face Trish and Lita at WrestleMania. Hell, that would have been a great match at Evolution. To be honest, that would have been a way great match. Even at WrestleMania, that would be great. But I know that's not gonna happen. Would it be great though? That'd be awesome. But you know, they started asking superpowers, and you know, they would make Bliss disappear, as they said. Oh, you know, when they did when they said when they made Bliss disappear, and they did the oh, 
show that was like regular show. It's like Mordecai and Rigby from regular show. That's what I'm like. That maybe to do Sasha Bailey. They just make a joke and they do oh uh, regular show. I can see that right now. And you know, Bliss, I took the title from you from um from Bailey. And you know, they talk about the women's division in 2019. As Bailey and Sasha said, we won in women's tag titles, which the least the fans kind of cheered for that. So I'll give them that. But dude, I swear every question that was asked out here looked like this could have been answered at Comic Con. These sound like Comic Con questions, okay? Like you would ask this at a convention to Sasha and Bailey, not ask random fans or like I say, independent wrestlers in the crowd about. Um, this form thing to Sasha and Bailey. The fact that you did it two times in a row this week is just dumb. And you see that the crowd didn't even really care throughout that in the women's tag titles. Because who really cared? Alright, like, come on, why would you do the same bullshit you did last week? But hey, this is Monday Night Raw, folks. What do you expect? But they want to be the A-show somehow. Um, next thing you know... What, what, what the fuck we have here? Uh, yes, Mickey James, Dana Brooke, and Fox come out. Which uh, Bliss said tag match as they some went to some I don't know what was it a uh, a Nintendo Switch commercial which I desperately need to play Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Which I don't know they tried to do with SmackDown did now doing these like sm Smash Brothers commercials or something. Not Smash Brothers commercial like SmackDown with the ad on the screen and stuff, but. Well, what do we have? We have Sasha and Bailey versus um, Alicia Fox and Mickey James. I feel like I've seen this match many times in the past, but um, Sasha and Bailey won. Bailey to Bailey on um, Mickey James. So um, whatever, as Bliss stood at um, ringside. I don't know if it'll be a tag match with the, with the like I mean tag titles for the women. I don't even know, but we'll see how that goes. They had a video package for Baron Corbin about his, like, this inspirational rise to power as they had a narrator and everything. Why? It's a joke. I don't know why they do it, but he talked about, it just sounded like a political ad, pretty much, how he's going to be the, the new general manager. And, you know, they had Corbin backstage then, um, which, um, Chad gave him Bobby Roode, which they won a rematch for the tag titles after, you know, Roode, um, Robe got pissed on, which was just horrible last week. Uh, Corbin. Fucking Corbin. Now, he pretty much says, you know what? Um, all this Bobby Roode has to do, he's got to beat Rockstar Spud. I mean, Drake Maverick tonight. And get a title shot. And that AOP and Chad Gable are banned from ringside. You know this was going to be a swerve or something sooner or later. You know this was coming. This is going to be some type of swerve. So... Watch out. Uh, for the third freaking week in a row, God knows only why, the Lucha House Party come out with the, with the piñatas and the revival. They complain about the Lucha House Party rules. So what do we do again? Let's do this in another Lucha House Party rules. Because it said you don't respect tag team wrestling. And we're going to teach them a lesson in a singles match. But this is now a tag match under Lucha House Party rules. Like, dude, this is so bad I had to laugh up at it. And it's, this is three weeks in a row. Who? Where is this getting over? Where is this even going? How is this shit getting over? It is it getting over? And I said, look at this. Let me just say, three weeks in a row, the Revival lose. So, fuck the Revival. And, uh, you know, just if you want to go through that whole saying. And, you know, I think to myself now, someone please tell me when the Revival's contracts are coming up. I really want to know. <laughs> please. I don't know if they need to go join that All Elite Wrestling thing that's been kind of been hearing about nowadays. Or they need to go to New Japan. Honestly, they, they fit right really well in the World Tag League right now in New Japan, to be honest. They fit really, they would fit the mold. They would. But I don't understand this Lucha House Party versus um, the Revival every week. Or was it a handicap match? No, it was a, no, it was a three-on-one match. I'm sorry, not a, not a tag match, but... It technically was a one on one, so well, I one on one, but a three on one. I, I I don't get I don't get where this is going. It, like it wasn't really a tag match, but it felt like a tag match. Maybe I wasn't looking at the TV or something because I I just seen it so many times. It's three weeks in a row. Why should I care about watching this match? It sucks. It it's it's bad. <laughs> no, 
No one wants to see this match. It's, it's dumb. I don't get it. This is just like, oh man, like, like I said before, this, I don't, I don't get it. When your contract's coming up, someone tell me. I want to know. What else we got here tonight? Um, we got Baron Corbin here. I guess to uh, talk about D. Drew. McIntyre Appreciation Night as um <clears throat> as he talked about him rising to general manager and he had a I guess like a gift for Drew McIntyre as a person that's been changing this show around on Drew McIntyre's Appreciation Night which he had a whole video package and they brought him out to give him a medal and you know a medal like Kurt Angle's medal like you're the you're the real gold medalist around here on Monday Night Raw and then McIntyre talked about all the guys in the back just playing video guy games and sitting around waiting for a paycheck while he's, he's on here reforming Raw in his image making the show better he said that Finn Balor is a boy in a man's world he's going to break him at the TLC pay-per-view which I guess that is a match now uh, to take him out There's a match to pay per view now. Uh, Dolph Ziggler pretty much comes out then and he pretty much looks at McIntyre saying, uh, I think you have a memory problem here. You know, I, I was here too. We both dominated Raw. Alright, why was I in the video package? And where was my invitation to the party? Uh, McIntyre pretty much went on to say that, you know, that's the thing, buddy. You were never invited, okay? You don't even uh, reach the height requirement as he pretty much talked about Ziggler saying, uh, you know, you're not the brains. I'm the brains, the muscle, the talent, the, the whole package. This was just a business relationship, and you know, um, now it's not working anymore. You helped me get into this position right now, so you succeeded at something for once. You helped me get into a prominent position on this show, and um, <clears throat> McIntyre thanked them, and then you know you can you can go now. You you can leave. You you can you can roll out of here. You're done. You, you've done your part, you can leave. Um, Ziggler was about to leave, but McIntyre uh, pretty much said you should be... What was that? McIntyre pretty much went on to say you need to be kissing my feet. And um, Ziggler hit McIntyre. Uh, McIntyre's about to get him, but Ziggler hit him with a zigzag then. Corbin says you're going to have a match with him right now, which... I mostly kind of expected this, to be honest, between Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler. Honestly, I think a lot of people were waiting for these two to break up a long time ago. And you knew this was coming. The way they did it out of nowhere is, eh, you kind of saw it coming. Just because now they made some team out of McIntyre, Baron Corbin, and Bobby Lashley. That now they have left Dolph Ziggler in the dust. Honestly, I've been waiting for Drew to actually take him out at a point in time. But this then became a match. Um, McIntyre pretty much got on the microphone saying, now nah, I'm going to beat you like someone I don't like, which is Finn Balor. Balor pretty much uh, came out uh, from the entrance. He looked at the match as the match it went on. But um, uh, Balor pretty much hit a uh, running drop kick into McIntyre into the uh, barricade. He had got up before the, the 10 count. Ziggler immediately hit him with a super kick. Uh, pretty much uh, taking him out right there. And they said, and I even thought this myself, but um, this is now the first time Drew McIntyre has been uh, pinned on Raw. Ever since he's even been back on Monday Night Raw, he has been finally pinned. I didn't expect it to be by Ziggler, though. And I think about this. This is the way I think they should have done it right here. Because um, this is how I feel like they could have elevated Finn Balor at the pay-per-view. Okay. Because I think he would need the bigger win if he won the match on it. It's like this. You could have Ziggler lose right here tonight on Raw. And they do the match the pay-per-view between Finn and McIntyre. Ziggler comes out. Distracts or does whatever. Finn gets the win. Gives uh, McIntyre's first loss. That's how I would have thought of it.
That's how I would have thought of it. But knowing this company would do some backwards. Well, not backwards all the way, but just some stuff like this. Because I was like, really? Ziggler's going to be the one to uh, beat McIntyre. Now, as for Dolph Ziggler being a face. Um, honestly, I want him to turn heel so long ago that I really want him the guy to go back to face now because at a point in time he was just dreading his heel until they, you know, not dreading his heel, dreading his face until they turned him heel, and that wasn't working for a good minute. But I guess face Ziggler again, I don't really know what to think on that, but uh, we shall we shall see where face Ziggler goes. McIntyre was pissed in the back and uh, pretty much says that, you know, Finn Balor is a marked man, so he better watch himself. Elias then had a guitar. He was about to sing a song in the ring. And as he was singing, Bobby Lashley and Leo Rush come out as, you know, almighty Bobby Lashley. And, you know, when he says almighty Bobby Lashley, all I can think of myself is Christopher Daniels now. When Christopher Daniels calls himself almighty, when they say almighty Christopher Daniels in a... Uh, Ring of Honor. That's really what I think about now. I feel like they stole that from him now for some reason. But um, Rush is putting over uh, Bobby Lashley. You know, calling him a Greek god and doing all these poses. And I, so, like now, I'm. I've already said this before about Bobby La Bobby Lashley, but now he is just either Lex Luger or Chris Masters doing all these poses. And the crowd really did not react. And once again, they stick the camera directly in his ass. Like, again, like he has to bend over so they can put the camera there. I don't know what type of you know weird stuff they're going on with that. Then again, I don't even know what they're doing with Bobby Lashley at this point. Okay, like they got you know Meatwad Rush right there just trying to get this stuff over and you know saying this man is a Greek god, but. Dude, I, I don't need to see the new Lex Luger slash Chris Masters. This is not working and it's not getting over. Elias said went up to attack him on stage. Um, but last year got him about to throw him into the LED wall. Elias said uh, threw him in there. Rush was running away. Uh, last year got out of there. But somehow Rush came back on the screen. Elias hit him with the guitar then. As a... Uh, you know, Balor was, I guess, threw him up there and put the two sweet sign up then. As he whacked Leo Rush in the... Back with a uh, Qatar. As for this segment itself, uh, I don't mind Elias, but the Bobby Lashley Leo Rush thing is not working. Listen, Lex Luger 2.0 slash Chris Masters 2.0. I don't know. It's dumb. I don't get the poses. I just think the craziest part is when they stick the camera directly in his ass. That's just the weirdest part to me. I don't know where Bobby Lashley is going here at this point or where this is getting him over. I don't know. I just sit there sometime and say, man. This guy should never left Impact because he was the man down there. Now he's back in WWE. I don't even know what to think about him anymore. Uh, Jinder Mahal and the same brothers in the back talking to Baron Corbin saying that Strowman's not going to make it to TLC. And, you know, Mahal said, I'm going to take care of Finn Balor for you tonight. Next thing you know, he's slaying Rhino come in, which I don't even see him on this show anymore. As Corbin was going through some numbers and saying that only one of you, you know, can be on this show, okay? And one of you would be fired tonight. So you're going to put them in a match against each other. Which I don't think been fired off this show is that bad. Especially for Raw. I'm going to go to SmackDown. And we'll get to them in a minute. Uh, Rockstar Spud versus Bobby Roode. Probably a match in TNA. I, probably, I swear I've seen this match in TNA probably about maybe what. Four or five years ago. I'm in the same concept. Except Rockstar Spud was being EC3's lackey at the time. If I'm correct. I, I think Roode. Yeah I think Roode was face. Was he face at the time or was he still heel? Like he had to be one of the two at the time in the company so uh, I just feel like I've seen this with Bobby Roode and uh you know Rockstar Spud yes he once again he comes out dressed as um Authors of Pain's little brother wearing those clothes uh Roode pretty much went in on uh, Rockstar Spud there until AOP was on screen beating up Chad Gable uh Bear Corbin with the swerve saying you know what it's not gonna be a one-on-one. -on -one. It's a handicap match now. You better get out there and help, uh, help him. Uh, Rude tried to um, finish the match quickly doing the uh, glorious DDT. Didn't that work? And let me say this about Bobby Rude. This guy came out with literally no robe, but so I can only see now Bobby Rude can only afford one robe now because he came out with a different colored robe almost every other week. But now he's out of robes after getting one pissed on. But ALP came out, they attacked him, Chad Gable came out to try to make the save and do something. 
but it did not work. They did the Super Collider. Maverick Tatnan pin Bobby Roode. There you go. Listen, I don't really care where this is going. Why this match happened, I don't even know. Okay, uh, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Now let's change the rules again. Is it as bad as, you know, the whole pissing on the, um, you know, robe last week? Nah, but some, you know there was some type of swerve coming on this when you knew they were going to be out here one way or another. And yeah, Corbin just made it like that, so... I don't know, Root and Gable, they just continue to destroy these guys. Um, some Sirens played, which at first I almost thought was going to be Scott Steiner. Um, they all, all these guys came out with, you know, masks, wearing all black, like a SWAT team. Dean Ambrose music played, which it was just a siren, like, it was just regular music, but you hear a, a big siren sound in the background. They had, all these guys were wearing gas masks, all I can think to myself now, he looked like the guy Pyro from the game Team Fortress 2. He was Bane from, uh, you know, Batman, The Dark Knight Rises, that's all I could see from him. Or he was, um, it looked like it was some purge. That whole alarm sound, all those guys coming out masks, it's almost like someone said, now commencing the purge. Now commencing the purge. That's all I could kind of think to myself when that was kind of going down. But Ambrose came out with a gas mask, doing a promo from the mask, saying it's, you know, it's not, you know, not too safe to bring this mask out, you know, breathe in Houston, because it's, it's so much of a slum, and he's going to protect him from the madman Rollins, which, you know, with the, the whole gas mask thing, like, they're really trying to get over this with this whole Dean Ambrose, and doesn't want to smell anything with the crowd this week, he really didn't want to smell them, he didn't, and, yeah, you know, I feel like I lo got lost on his promo here, but he talked about, you know, fans putting phones in their faces, and, you know, they need to shut their mouths, and that you have, you know, they have no character, you have no moral compass, that's, you know, you all cheer Rollins all the time, yes, the Shield once meant something, but Rollins and Reigns, you know, start caring about being role models and stuff, and Ambrose says, I didn't change and everything, because I had integrity, uh, Ambrose said, yes, he was the moral compass of that of me, and everything, and that Rollins would lose control of himself and the Intercontinental title at TLC, he could take it easily if he wanted to, but it's gonna fall in his hands sooner or later, Rollins' music hit, there was a burn it down chant, he came from the back, beating up some of the, you know, SWAT team guys, as the others were distracted, he went after Ambrose then, um, the other guys, SWAT guys tried to get in the ring, which I swear there was the same independent wrestlers from early in the night, but, um, early in the night, but, uh, you know, once he started, um, fighting them, he went after, uh, Dean Ambrose then, they went to the crowd, fought for a second, rounds, it came back in, you know, back through the barricade from the crowd to attack Dean Ambrose, but Dean Ambrose had hit, um, Rollins with a gas mask then taking him out he dirty deed hit him with dirty deeds on the outside of the ring he told all the um the SWAT guys to throw him back in the ring they threw him back in and Rollins said now Rollins but he told Rollins you have no integrity and he hit him with another dirty deeds but then the fans chanted one more time several times then at um Ambrose to do it again. Yes, he is a heel, but for some reason they went from cheering Seth Rollins. Now they continue to chant one more time at um, Dean Ambrose for him to do another Dirty Deeds on Seth Rollins to take him out. So, um, why? I, I don't even know. Honestly, this is probably the one, at least one of the most interesting segments of the night. I could say that because, um, yeah, he looked like Bane. Or, or like some, you know, bad, uh, you know, bad, what would I look what, Purge member or something. Wasn't that Sanity's gimmick to be like the Purge, if I remember? So I would say it, I swear that was supposed to be, they were supposed to be like the Purge or something, but I, I guess that's not happening anymore, uh, too. But, um, uh, two in that, but. That's kind of what's going on from there. But like I said, this is probably one of the only um, actually interesting segments. I'm just trying to get through this whole Dean Ambrose smell thing going on. Uh, they didn't went to ask Renee Young. I, I swear they asked Renee Young all the time for some reason. They really keep asking her like she's going to know what's going down. Says, you know, no one's entitled to know what goes around 
goes behind um, closed doors, she said, between husband and wife. And I remember somebody writing on Twitter saying, you know, these two are on Total Divas and kind of exposed their lives. So uh, <laughs> we kind of know what goes on behind closed doors. Someone pointed that out. It is kind of funny. Uh, Nia Jax and Tami were backstage as they announced that Ember Moon would be Ronda Rousey's tagging partner for the night because who else was it going to be, really? Um, she then pretty much said that she was hoping Caruso was going to be her partner because that we have dealt with Moon several times and now they're going to rearrange her appearance like Becky Lynch, which I swear she tried to memorize that promo and said that we're going to take what is mine. Mine, she screamed really loud into the mic then. So, a very loud mine. The promo was... I don't know. It's a little bit. This was a little better than last week's promo in the ring because that promo Nia Jax cut last week was god awful. It was, it was crap. It was really crap out there. This one I feel like she tried to memorize from here. Uh, Rhino went against Heath Slater. This went nowhere. Uh, Slater hit him with a net breaker, and Rhino, I guess, goes to SmackDown or something after this. Hopefully, because I don't really see. Where else he was gonna go other than SmackDown? Honestly, this breaks up another tag team. It's not like the tag division was never really nothing good on Raw right now to begin with, but this mess with the tag division again. Uh, Corbin congratulates Slater and asking him to do for Rhino. Rhino, he said he has a family, but you're gonna need your new uniform. So now he's Slater as a referee. So maybe Rhino didn't get the short end of the stick here. Maybe uh, Slater did. Now he's a referee now. I don't know where this is gonna go. I'm sure what Corbin's gonna mess with him several weeks until. Slater turns on him and says, I quit or something, or someone will stop this madness with him being a referee. But then again, what were he Slater, Slater and Rhino doing to begin with? What were they doing? Well, they weren't doing anything for so long, you forget they were there. So, you, you forget they're even there. So, what, what were they really doing at this whole time? They've done, they've done nothing. I don't know what's the point of breaking up another tag team. All they just really said, they were the first ever SmackDown tag team champions. That's it. Finn Balor versus Jinder Mahal. Um... What do I have to say? Nothing much from it. Cruz, I do. I forgot Cruz was even there at one point. Which they had the point that Cruz beat Jinder Mahal. But how long was that go? About a month ago, I think. I swear that was like a whole month ago when Cruz beat Jinder. But, you know, he held Balor from the Singh Brothers. Balor pretty much hit the coup de grave, won the match. Uh, but I, I swear, I forgot Cruz was even there. I was like, oh, Cruz is helping. Then they say he beat Mahal. I said, dude, how long was that match long ago? So, come on, Finn was going to win. Uh, Finn's like, at least been on the show throughout half the night anyways. But, uh, he was about to be interviewed. Drew Galloway, not Galloway, uh, McIntyre came and attacked him from behind. Beating up Finn Balor, saying, you know, uh, you know, just beating up several times. So, they pulled him off. They talked about Lars Sullivan being, I guess, a free agent now. So, uh, we'll see where that goes. Uh, Nia Jackson Tamina went against Ronda Rousey and Ember Moon. Rousey was out there first before Moon's music even hit. As they attacked her, they went back from the commercial. They started working over Moon. Uh, Rousey got in and wanted to face Jax, but yeah, this thing I don't get now. Why are they having Nia Jax acting all intimidated? As she, yes, she's a heel and she's supposed to be this big, you know, push, not big push, but like this big scary person or something. And, you know, supposed to be like, okay, yeah, I broke Becky's face trying to make her very look tough at the time. But now they have her looking scared of Ronda at the time, very intimidated by her, backing away, and didn't even want to get in the ring. Kept trying to attack Tamina as she pretty much showed fear half the time running off. It's almost like now, yes, it's like so some cowardly heel. Or Chase Hill, really, she's going to talk a whole bunch of crap. But then when the, st when it ha the real thing happens... Um, Nia just backed out several times. Ronda threw her back into the ring. Kept going in on Jax. Not Jax, but kept going in on Tamina. Um, uh, Tamina tried to get Rousey, but it did not work. Uh, Moon hit the Eclipse. Rousey put in the arm bar, and that was the end of the match from there. Listen, I, I don't know. Um, was this show really any better when I think about Monday Night Raw? I, not really, I feel like. I feel like a lot of fans sat on their hands at one point throughout this show. Listen, there was still a lot of bad. The only thing I could say that was one of the most interesting things was what the, um, when the camera fell. The most interesting things on here was the Ziggler, not Ziggler, but the, um, Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose thing. Yeah, it's a little hard to take, uh, Ambrose seriously talking gas mask, looking like Bane from Batman, but... 
it was an interesting segment, I will say that. Now, for stuff like Rhino versus Slater, or doing the same rehash stuff like last week with that whole forum with Alexa Bliss, Sasha, and Bailey, or the revival in the Lucha House Party, where I don't know where that is even going now at this point. I got no clue where it's going. It's just almost like the same. It is the same thing every week, and it's crap. Like, what? Where? where is this accomplishing? Are Revival going to get one win over the Lucha House Party? Because it's pretty much a handicap match. I don't know. I got no clue. Uh, Nia Jackson to me versus Ronda Rousey and Moon. Like, after the whole beatdown thing at the beginning, you knew who was going to win this match. And um wasn't really much to say from there. Finn Balor versus Jinder didn't really care that much. I was actually surprised to see Cruz out there anyway helping. Um... I've already said what I said about um, Drew and Ziggler. I thought it would have went probably at TLC with Finn Balor getting the win on him. But it may be a little bit different. I was just surprised to actually see McIntyre lose. Uh, I still feel like it was too much. So we got to keep putting Corbin on like damn it 75% of the TV screen time. Why? I don't even know. Um, yeah. Uh, but I think that was pretty much it to what I can actually have from Raw from here. That was something. Okay. Because I, I don't know. He's still getting out. <laughs> I'm just gonna take Nia Jax seriously at time. But what was this a better show? Was it some slight of an improvement? I I want to say maybe, but like it's still a lot of bad that you're just bored throughout this three hour crap fest. And listen, last week was horrible. Okay, last week was just god awful. Okay, this one tonight. There's still more bad than good, but at least I was able to count maybe one or two good to interesting things on here. Other than that, this show is still pretty bad, okay? It still sucked. Alright, that's, you know, I started to say, tell people now. You might as well really start looking at that All Elite Wrestling or just, I don't know, go watch NJPW, watch Ring of Honor, watch Impact, watch NXT, or just SmackDown in general because... Dude, you know, my, and this thing, people really thought Monday Night Raw was really going to be better this week. Like, come on, people really should get their expectations high about this show, okay? This show's bad almost every freaking week. Last week was just one of the worst in years. It's just bad in general, and I've said this multiple times in multiple Monday Night Raw reviews. You can only find one or good two things from an entire three hour crap fest known as Raw, and maybe you could point out, like I said, you can point at least one of the good things to pencil in. But overall, like, the show is just bad. I don't know where everybody thought this was going to be a big improvement or it's going to be a change turnaround. Was it baby steps? Maybe, I guess, on maybe a, on some small level parts. But this show's still bad. And I'm so, I know they're still built to TLC. And I'm sure SmackDown will just be better by default, okay? SmackDown is now better by default at this point. Especially last week. That was just a no contest when you look at it. SmackDown just beat them just because. But, like, say, so you still got stupid stuff on, on the show, like, what, Bobby Roode and, and Chad, not Chad Gable, but, uh, you know, Rockstar Spud right there in this match. Why? I, I don't even know. Okay? I, I, I don't know. And, like, sorry, I spoke on the main event. I still think Nia Jax to me are horrible, but, um, you know, the Bliss Forum was a waste of time. Um, I got on Lucha House rules there. The McIntyre and Ziggler thing, I already spoke on. I'm kind of re repeating myself, but I'm just kind of reiterating what going went on on this show tonight, just to give a quick rundown on it and stuff. Because I already talked about um, McIntyre and this whole Ziggler breakup. I guess Ziggler is a face now, and him getting a win over McIntyre tonight, and Finn being on the show. Oh yeah, I guess another bad thing to do is just Bobby Lashley in these poses. I don't know. Like I said, he is Chris Masters slash Lex Luger. That's all he is now. Okay. That's it. But, you know, other than this show just still being bad in general, it, it really is still bad, okay? I'm not going to sit here and say it was a good show. It's still the shit, all right? It really is. So, like I said, people, just need to check something else out, uh, too. But I'm going to end this review off here. Um, you tell me if you even thought Money Never was better. I'm sure it was better than last week, if that's your opinion. But do you actually believe this show is actually better? Or did you just remain in the same spot of it being as bad as last week's show? Because there are a couple things that was mostly worse than last week's show, okay? It really is. But I'm going to end this review right here. Um, but, oh, be careful complaining or something coming entitled Brad, as some people say it on the internet. But I am out of here. I will see you guys later. Peace.
I need to, I don't know, probably check out the World Tag League, or I'm going to check out some Kingdom Hearts to prepare myself for three. I'm out of here. See you guys later. Peace out. Comment and subscribe and tell me what you thought about Monday Night Raw. Master Bryce 890.